Guys, I've got a really awesome thing here. We have the uh, SN30 Pro Bluetooth game pads, and I have a little bit of a special surprise for the end. So stick around for that. <laughs> so let's open these up and see what we got inside here. Now, I did open one of these and I don't remember which one it is. Um, I think they're functionally the same. Yeah, there's one. There's the other. This is the one that I took apart here, or opened up, I should say. Uh, you can see that there's a sticky little thing on the pad here to protect the thumbsticks, or the buttons. Man, this feels just like a uh, Super Nintendo controller. Wow. It feels all, so much like a Super Nintendo controller. And this is really a Bluetooth pad. Like this doesn't have uh, 2.4 gigahertz or anything like that. Let's see if we can turn it on. We can. And it is searching for a machine to connect to. Yes, I'm on Windows. Let's not make a huge ordeal about it. Uh, we're gonna Bluetooth it up here. Where's the Bluetooth? I don't know how to do this. There it is, Pro Controller, connect. And the light stopped blinking. Maybe we need to turn it back on again because it doesn't seem like it did it. Why do I have a billion of these? Oh, it's right here, it's this one, new device. <laughs> hey, there we go, I just got a vibration from it too, so. That, that seemed to work and it's connected now, we can see here. Um, that's cool. So let's go into Steam and try this out. Let's try. Celeste, I guess. Now, one of the things about this that I've realized as I'm holding it here is that um, there are there's a very narrow R and L like bumper button. The there's also the R2 and L2 buttons or the triggers, and these are digital. There, it doesn't feel like there's any analog in it at all. Um, Interesting. I'm not getting any, uh, I don't have the ability to control here. That's fascinating. This game has always given me controller issues. So you know what? I'm not going to try Celeste here. Let's try Bit Trip. Now this is an oldie but a goodie. Wow. No control here either. Well, let's um, see what's wrong. This is like not even doing anything in Steam. Enable Steam input for generic controller. I bet you that's the problem. Oh, here we go. This is the problem right here. B. So this, this controller needs to be configured in Steam before you, uh, you can use it. Yep. That seems to be working. Oh wow, it's 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 fully digital. There's no, I can't I can't add anything to it. It's either on or 32,767. Start select, button, button, button. There's no, this share button doesn't seem to do anything. Now I have other controllers. Uh, I have these which 8BitDo also sent to me. Um, this is the Pro 2, and this is the SN30 Pro. So, uh, this has multiple modes you can switch to. Uh, it has buttons in the back. This has no such thing. Um, it is, or it, it does, but it's all digital. So, power plus Y is switch. Uh, X plus power is X input. B plus uh, so I wonder what it's in right now. Let's, let's shut it off and connect it with X input. So let's do X plus start or, uh, X plus power. Shut it off by holding both buttons. That's what I have come to understand anyway. There. Okay, there we go. We have no controllers detected. X plus power. I don't know what the power button is supposed to be. But that should be in 
Xbox mode now. So if we go here and we go here, we scroll down, do we see an Xbox device? No, sir. There we go, right there. Let's see what this Kinect says. And we just heard it. Oh yeah, there we go. Great. So we have uh, an Xbox controller here. Oh, see, this is set up as A and X and B and Y versus how we would normally want it, A, X, B, Y. Um, but we can fix that in Steam. So if we go here, oh my God, it just launched. This is why I hate Windows, guys. How do I shut this off completely and never show up again? You know, it's interesting because I have put this controller in Xbox mode and it has never brought up uh, the, the game bar. So it might be a Windows update, it might be something else. Get out of here forever. I hate you, Microsoft. Now let's actually use our computer the way we intend to and not the way Microsoft wants us to. Let's go to settings. Whoa, dude. Wow, what in the heck? It is, wait, what is going on? Test input. What in the heck is going on? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm just pushing it once, guys, and it's like fully going on its own speed here. And the button layout seems to keep changing. So let's shut this off and turn it back on and see what happens. Now let's turn it on in Xbox mode. Hopefully it reconnects automatically. Well, let's see about uh, reconnecting this controller. Maybe I don't need to hold the X button down now that I've put it in Xbox mode. Maybe we should look at the instruction manual, <laughs> which is this massive, ridiculous thing here. Press and hold X plus start to turn on the controller. The first and second LED should start to blink. Hold pair button for three seconds to enter in its pairing mode. Uh, LED starts to rotate from left to right. Use the Windows device Bluetooth settings and turn it on. Pair with SN30 Pro, LED becomes solid. Okay, so let's do this. And then let's do this. Hold this button for three seconds. There we go. Now it should appear here. I don't understand why this is all necessary because I've already done this, but no new devices. It says unknown device. I have so many of these. Um, that's why I have a ton in there, but now let's, let's uh, go over here and remove the SN30 Pros. Xbox plus start, hold this button for three seconds. There. Now, connect the new device. Let's add a Bluetooth device. Please show up. There we go. All right, now we're connected. Let's go back here. And we only have, okay, that's working as A. Let's go back. Hey, there we go. I think that was a weird fluke. So uh, I might've cut some stuff out here. Just make sure that you read the instruction manual because <laughs> it was giving me some grief. It looks like, I don't know if it started automatically in like Android mode or something, but um, it, started in some other mode that Windows and Steam didn't like. It was like generic gamepad mode. So I've paired it now with this PC in Xbox mode. So the A button is actually registering as B, which is what I want. Uh, the B button is registering as A, and this is set up like an Xbox controller, which is what we want. So now let's try and run some software. Uh, ergonomically speaking, this isn't my ideal. I know some people are gonna love this. It, it really feels like, oops, sorry. It really feels like a Super Nintendo controller. I mean, it is, it's kind of, if I wasn't looking at it, it's kind of uncanny, honestly. Let's see how this fares here. So I can tell you right now, this rumble is a bit weak sauce. It feels like a, a phone from like 2013. Like, now I gotta say that I think that I actually do 
I know how to do this. Get out of here, dude. Um, th this is actually fairly comfortable. I was kind of uh, skeptical that this would be comfortable, especially especially given the um, analog sticks. But honestly, it's it's fairly comfortable. Uh, you know, I don't have anything to grip here, so for me, that's less preferable. But again, I mean, this is going to be all your um, your own preference for your controller type. Um, well, I just fell to my death. No, I didn't. Okay. Get out of here. Go away. And, boop, kill that guy. And we got this zombie. And we got this zombie. And we got this zombie guy. And we got that zombie. Now, you know, this is serviceable for sure. I can't reach him from here, really. This is definitely playable. You can definitely play the game using this controller. Um, now there, I don't believe there's a nuance like with the uh, triggers that you would need for a game like this. And for emulation, this would probably be great. Um, these do have a bit of a concave feel here. So, you know, your finger kind of wants to rest there naturally. Uh, so for playing a Super Nintendo game, these would be actually pretty great, I feel like. Um, as opposed to something like this, where this has the, the same basic shape here, uh, and these actually feel like legit Super Nintendo um, shoulder buttons, I guess you would call them. Um, so this is the 8 bit Doe Pro 2. This is the SN30 Pro. Uh, and this is great. I actually really do like this. It You can use... Um, a USB type C to connect this to your PC or whatever you're using a Steam Deck and it works great. This is functionally identical. It's just with a blue or I'm sorry, a purple color scheme. You know, you use the the X plus the start button to start it up in Xbox mode, which is typically what you would want to use. Um and I believe these actually come with yeah, look at that. These come with 8-bit dough branded USB cables. You probably can't see that, but uh, it is the 8-bit dough heart icon logo thingy that they have. Both of them came with that. But now, now that we've like sorted this out and gone through the hassle of figuring it out, I want to go over this guy right here. This is the 8-bit dough ultimate Bluetooth controller. This is, uh, let's clean this up a little bit here. We're gonna get rid of these. We're gonna open uh, this guy up here. Oh, come on. Oh. Yeah, whoa, look at that guy. That is a nice looking controller. Pull that off, pop this out here. Oh my goodness. Oh, and it's white on the back, dude. That's awesome. Heck yeah. And there is a switch here on the back as well. This is, there's a little Bluetooth icon here, and then it says 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so that must mean it comes with a dongle. I mean, that's probably what this is here. So we have a dock for charging here, and there's this trap door here for uh, a uh, transceiver here. So this uh, plugs in here. And what's really cool about this, this is the actual receiver for this controller. And when you plug this into the dock, the dock actually acts as a pass-through. Um, at least that's what I believe because 8 Doe has actually sent me this white guy here, this white one. And this is actually not uh, the uh, Bluetooth controller. This is a, uh, this is exclusively 2.4 gigahertz, um, but it's very, very similar in form factor um, the only thing that looks different here is the color, and there is a synchronized button on the top here, which there isn't on this one. But what's really cool about this is that it's uh, exclusively 2.4 gigahertz. It comes with a dock, which I have right here as well, and this is plugged into my computer. And so when you have this sitting on the dock, uh, you have this sitting on the dock, you pick it up, and it automatically connects to the transceiver. And uh, I'm gonna guess that this does the exact same 
thing here. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to shut this guy off here real fast. Let's see, uh, let's go here and set this to Bluetooth and we're going to turn it on. And we're going to search for a connection and that looks like it's in pairing mode. So this looks like that's the correct one here. Pro controller. Hopefully this is in Xbox mode. Uh, let's see if this works out of the box. Nope, I think we're gonna have to set it up in Steam. This is set up as a Nintendo Switch controller. Okay, so let's disable the Nintendo Switch button layout. And now this should be A. Yep, and that's B. Okay, great. Uh, I love that that is <laughs> the, I love that that is an option in Steam. So what we have here is uh, a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This is the ultimate Bluetooth controller, and this is the uh, ultimate 2.4 gigahertz controller, the white one. Um, so that's pretty sick. I, uh, dude, this is this is absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, I think that this is like one of the prettiest controllers I've ever seen. And you can actually you can see here that this is A B X Y, and this is A B X Y. So of course this is going to be in. Uh, Steam, uh, switch mode. Uh, I'm curious if it's going to be in switch mode and if there's any way to switch that out, uh, pun intended, in 2.4 gigahertz mode. Um, so let's go look in here and we'll see. Because you always want to read the manual. And you, in order to read it, you have to actually open this up here. So. Press the home button on the controller. Hold home button for three seconds to turn off the controller. Hold home button for eight seconds to force shut down the controller. The controller will turn off when placed on the dock. The, uh, plug the 2.4 gigahertz receiver into the charging dock, then connect it to your Windows device or switch dock via the uh, USB cable for a better user experience. And uh, LED lights indicate the player number, one, LED indicates player one, two LEDs player indicate player two, 2.4 gigahertz, okay. So yes, it looks like there are other modes here. So there's the wireless connection, there's wired connection. It doesn't appear to be any other modes. So you can't actually start this up in uh, a different controller uh, scheme. Um, that's okay. I mean, that switch on screen right now is uh, perfectly, adequate for switching to something less alien than the uh, the default switch orientation for buttons. Uh, I gotta say, I love the feel of this controller. Uh, I want to see how well this performs in 2.4 gigahertz mode though. Now it looks like it disappeared from Steam, but if we plug that dock in, I wonder, there you go. 8 Do Ultimate Wireless Controller. Yeah, and, then, and we have analog triggers. We have the, we don't have a share button thing here, but, and it looks like it's showing up as an Xbox controller, which is interesting. Um, hold B to exit, B to exit. Boom. All right, let's go back into Doom Eternal. Do I need to restart Doom in order to play this? I'm curious how this is going to... Doom is just not responding, apparently. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Doom doesn't uh, wanna play nice with this, even though Steam is recognizing it. Let's try restarting the game. I gotta say, I love this design, though. It is really nice. You know, it is a little... It's a bit noisy. Let's see. About the same. Now, I'm curious what these three dots here do because this looks like all of those lights are on. I don't know if you can see, but all of those lights are on. 
which might mean that this is player four. I don't, I don't even know. I'm getting control now, so I, I think I just needed to restart the game. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and the uh, the rumble is instantly better. The other rumble uh, in the uh, SN30s was uh, just slightly weak, it felt like. I mean, uh, the SN30s had to be a little more compact. Like, you know, the size difference is, is pretty telling. Although I will say that these analog sticks do not feel quite as precise as the uh, the other the SN30 analog sticks. Whoop. Oh, I think it might also be that I set this up to have a different control scheme in Steam input. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's what I did. No, it says official Doom layout for Steam Pack. Okay. I don't know. Fascinating. Anyway. If you like this video, if you like the kind of work that I'm doing here, make sure you get subscribed to stay up to date with all the fun stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Uh, occasionally I do controller reviews like this. I am a big controller fan. I love controllers. I, I am a controller nerd. I have a wealth of controllers and I geek out about them. And uh, if you like controllers, controller reviews, in-depth first impressions like I'm doing here, get subscribed. Because that's what, uh, that's kind of some of the things that I do around here. Um, I really, I do like this controller. I like it, how it looks. I like how it feels in the hand. It's performing well. Um, I, I like the rumble, although I have become accustomed to the Steam Deck's haptics. And so this does feel more like uh, an N64 rumble pack or an Xbox, or an original Xbox rumble setup versus the haptic feedback that... Uh, I have become accustomed to even even something like the Dual Shock has, uh, or the Dual Sense, I should say, has a more refined feel. All, all in all, I do I do really like this controller quite a bit. Um, I think I'm probably going to lean more towards this guy, the Ultimate uh, 2.4 gigahertz, the the white controller here on my desk, because um, it defaults to Xbox mode, or at least I can put it in Xbox mode, and I don't have to worry about um, you know, certain games being incompatible, uh, you know, even with Steam input, there are some issues with games running in Switch mode. Although, since this is running as a Switch controller and there are these buttons on the back, I'm curious if I can configure them here. Let's check. They should be here in the... Nope, they are not in here. That is incredibly disappointing because very few controllers allow me to configure the P1 and P2 buttons, which is what this is labeled here. These are, I would call them grip buttons um, or R4 and R, or R4 and L4. I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope my editor has fun making something useful out of this. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth your time. I hope you had a good time here with me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now, and have a great day.